our uh, just our folks here in Central Iowa. So we're really excited to have all of you who are joining us from all over the state today to participate in our Advocacy Day. I wanted to take a moment uh, as we get started today to uh, remind folks who is IEC. Uh, the Iowa Environmental Council is a nonprofit, nonpartisan, non-governmental statewide policy and advocacy organization. We were founded in 1995. Last year, we celebrated our 25th anniversary, which was very exciting. Uh, the Iowa Environmental Council views environmental advocacy work as uh, a partnership, uh, all of us working together to make statewide policy happen. So we work uh, throughout the year to educate, advocate, and build coalitions that help us to raise awareness, generate action, and impact policy to make Iowa a better place to live, work, and explore. Uh, we do that work through uh, our 10,000 supporters and members that follow our work, that engage in our action alerts, uh, and participate in our events. Our more than 80 member organizations, which are comprised of other uh, environmental groups, other nonprofit groups, and for-profit businesses that are work interested in sustainability or other environmental issues, whether personally, just as a business owner and operator, or their business might be working in those spaces. And so we are really, uh, we are really lucky to be able to work with a broad variety of organizations uh, to make this policy work happen. If we were in the rotunda, you would see those tables filling up the space of all of those partner orgs uh, that we work together with uh, throughout session and throughout the year to make this event happen. Uh, but today you'll find them in the exhibitor section of uh, the Whova platform so that you can learn more about their work. Uh, and we'll have time for that later today. In fact, let's talk about today's agenda. Uh, we're starting now with our welcome. So thank you and welcome. We're gonna spend about 15 minutes uh, with some remarks uh, as we typically do at the Capitol. Uh, and we'll, uh, we'll welcome those speakers in just a moment. Following that uh, remark, following the remarks, we'll be hosting a live virtual advocacy training starting at 12.30. Again, that's here on the Whova platform. And so just like we do during our normal advocacy day in one of the committee rooms, we'll be hosting an advocacy training where you'll learn uh, effective ways to connect with legislators, ways to make your messages meaningful, and ways to think about approaching advocacy and why it's important to get involved at any level from wherever you are in Iowa. Uh, we'll have an opportunity for you to visit exhibitors. Uh, you can visit them anytime throughout the afternoon today, but we will have dedicated time uh, starting at 1.30. And then beginning at two o'clock, uh, we have a number of breakout sessions that you can choose to attend. So if you are opting to participate in a breakout session, you'll log on at two o'clock and choose the breakout session that you'd like to attend. And then we'll wrap things up starting at 2.45 to get you on your way for the rest of your day. Uh, so I'm going to move on now to our remarks for the day. We have several speakers who have prepared remarks for us uh, this afternoon. Dr. Brian Campbell, our new executive director here at IEC, will kick things off to talk to you a little bit about the importance of Advocacy Day, uh, why we do this work, and um, what you can expect. We have Representative Joel Olson with us today, Rehan Rashidi, who will talk about 100% uh, Iowa and the grassroots advocacy uh, clean energy work that 100% Iowa is engaged in. Representative Norlin Momsen, as well as Cody Smith from the Center for Rural Affairs. And so I am going to go ahead and uh, kick off their remarks. As usual, you can um, submit questions in the Zoom Q&A. You can also submit questions uh, in the Whova app uh, as we're going along throughout the day today. We're really delighted that you're here and thank you so much. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for our first ever virtual environmental advocacy day. 
I'm excited to welcome Iowans from across the state and from more than 20 member organizations who are tabling virtually today. I'm Dr. Brian Campbell, and I've joined the Iowa Environmental Council just over a month ago as executive director. For the previous six years, I was director of sustainability education and partnerships at Central College and Pella. And this event was something I always look forward to as a chance to help students engage with legislators and with the remarkable community of environmental advocates we have across our state. Over the past several years, I've been an IEC supporter and have collaborated with many of our member organizations, and I'm excited to continue expanding those connections. In my first few weeks, I've been immersing myself in the work and meeting with as many people as I can to hear the stories of IEC's past successes and to hear how others envision us continuing the urgent work of protecting Iowa's environment. As I welcome you today and join with you, I wanna share a few things I see as important priorities as we look to the future. Our staff and board, along with many of our partner organizations, has deepened our commitment to justice, equity, diversity, inclusion. We're gonna to work together to elevate the voices of younger and more diverse Iowans who are essential to achieving the kind of powerful movement and the kind of policies we need. We're gonna continue our focus at the state level, but we also see increasing opportunities to support bold policies at the local level, building on our experience in Des Moines, which in January adopted the most ambitious climate resolution and goals of any city in the nation. And in our work on energy, water, and land stewardship, we increasingly see climate change as a key thread connecting what we do. Extreme weather is impacting our farms and our cities more and more each year. We've all seen that in the past week. And Iowa is positioned to lead the way in developing the kind of energy systems and agricultural practices to meet this challenge. IEC's mission is to educate, advocate, and build coalitions, to raise awareness, to generate action, and impact policy to make Iowa a better place to live, work, and explore. We serve in a unique space, uniting and amplifying the voices of more than 10,000 Iowans and over 80 member organizations, together to advocate for a cleaner, healthier Iowa at the legislature, the rulemaking agencies, and when necessary in the courts. Our goal is to raise awareness, generate action, and create the kind of large scale change that'll make Iowa a better place to live, work, and explore. Advocacy is key to that mission. For all of this to succeed, we need to share resources and information on water and energy issues, provide tools to connect with lawmakers, and engage Iowans in the call for this more sustainable and cleaner home we all share. And that's what today's all about. A year ago, we hosted our advocacy event at the Capitol Rotunda just days before the legislature shut down due to COVID-19. We saw great success in that legislative session in 2020, gaining renewed funding for REAP and passing landmark legislation to put solar net metering into law. 2021 has continuing challenges with COVID-19, but we remain busy even virtually at the Capitol during this session. Our energy team is tracking exciting legislation to expand a toll solar tax credit while watching bills on transportation, building codes, and more. Our water team has convened a coalition to push for funding the trust, and we're working to improve legislation right now on stormwater, flood mitigation, soil health, natural infrastructure, and more. This annual Advocacy Day is always an opportunity to make new connections and to deepen the bonds within our coalition. Each year, we invite legislators and partners to discuss the issues they're engaged with during the session. So I'm pleased to welcome State Representatives Joe Oldson and Norlin Momsen, along with Cody Smith of the Center for Rural Affairs and Rehan Rashidi from 100% Iowa. Following their remarks, we'll host a live advocacy training 
You can then visit our virtual exhibitors to learn more about their work, about legislative issues and priorities, and how you can get involved in their efforts. Good afternoon. I'm Joe Olson, a state representative from Des Moines, and I want to thank you for being here for the Iowa Environmental Council's Advocacy Day. Now more than ever, your work as an advocate on behalf of Iowans and the environment we live in is important. Iowa is a renewable energy leader with more than half of our electricity be being generated by wind and solar. We are first in the nation in the percentage of renewable generation per capita, and that capacity continues to grow. The work of the Iowa Environmental Council and advocates like you have been an important part of getting us to where we are today. So take a moment, pat yourself on the back and be thankful for what we've gotten done, but then get ready. We need more energy, we need more advocates, and we have a lot more work to do. I wanna take a moment today to highlight two pieces of um, legislation or action that need, need to be addressed and uh, need some advocacy this year to get them moving forward. One, is the solar tax credit program. We have been a leader in this nation in moving ourselves forward in solar tax, uh, solar energy. And that program on the federal level is due to, to sunset in 2022. And Iowa has patterned itself under that, uh, after that federal program. We need uh, this program. It has been a great incentive for people to move themselves to solar power and their demand has grown significantly for this. This program continues to play an important part as we move forward in uh, renewable energy processes, and it needs legislative action to keep it moving forward. House File 221 is in the Ways and Means Committee this year. It has moved out of subcommittee. It is on the Ways and Means calendar, and it is an important part of keeping this program alive. Uh, it will allocate more tax credit money it will move that sunset date out further and help the program move forward and be an important part of our process of here in Iowa. The second piece I want to emphasize to you is energy efficiency programs. In 2018, the legislature cut funding processes that went to energy efficiency programs. And those programs have been so vitally important in updating particularly our older housing stock and helping low-income families get, become more energy efficient. We continue to feel the effects of extreme weather um, conditions, um, everything from derechos here in Iowa to uh, massive snowstorms in Texas last week. And it seems like they are becoming a common almost every week process here in, uh, in our lives. And so energy efficiency programs have become so much more important as we help Iowans become more efficient in their energy use and be more prepared to deal with these weather, extreme weather conditions that are continuing to uh, be a part of our daily lives here. So thank you for your advocacy. I'm glad you're involved. We need every voice out there that we can get to help us move forward uh, in a progressive energy fashion. Thank you. Hi. I'm Rehan Rashidi, a clean energy organizer for the Iowa Environmental Council's 100% Iowa Project, which is a grassroots campaign that unites and empowers Iowans to learn about and advocate for clean energy in the state. We kicked off this project in January 2020, and since then, 100% Iowa has signed up more than 5,000 supporters across all 99 counties. While our first year didn't include the live events we planned thanks to COVID, We've been successful in digital organizing to continue increasing our reach and providing a platform for clean energy education and advocacy through social media, newsletters, action alerts, virtual events, and more. One major campaign that we worked on was 100% Des Moines, a local effort to get the city council to adopt a clean energy resolution. With key partners and a coalition of supporters that consisted of diverse individuals, community groups, and business leaders, we advocated for the resolution through sign-on letters, action alerts, and meetings with city council members. We also worked with partners to organize programs such as an info session to inform Des Moines residents about what this goal means and how they can get involved. And we also helped plan a virtual clean energy tour for the city council members. In that virtual tour, we featured local clean energy and energy efficiency businesses, as well as corporations that take sustainability measures. 
With participation and support from the community, the City Council adopted an ambitious 24-7 carbon-free energy resolution by 2035, the first of its kind nationwide. This 24-7 language is important as it essentially means that by 2035, all Des Moines customers will receive electricity from only renewable sources, no fossil fuels or any carbon credits involved. Looking ahead, our team is hopeful that other cities in Iowa and across the country will adopt similar goals, creating the opportunity to strategically plan for a just transition away from dirty and expensive fossil fuels to clean energy sources to power our homes, buildings, transportation, and industry. After the success of IEC and 100% Iowa last year in passing good solar policy, we hope to follow that up this year with an extension and expansion of the state solar tax credit. House File 221, which is currently before the full House Ways and Means Committee after passing unanimously out of the House of Committee. We're tracking a number of other bills and are committed to making sure Iowans are informed and can take part in the process by providing comments or contacting their legislators. Iowa is a clean energy leader, but we have so much work to do, as the state has a great clean energy potential and IEC and our partners work to realize that potential and ensure that the energy transition is an equitable one to protect Iowans and the environment. This is Representative Norman Mumson, and I'm speaking to you from the cab of my pickup on a cold February morning. And uh, so right now, uh, actually soil health isn't real close to what we're thinking about today, but, um, Wanted to speak a second about that. Um, I have an interest in soil health mainly because if you read a lot of the farm magazines and things like that, that's the new uh, hot topic or hot phrase. And kind of where I'm coming from, uh, being a legislator and a farmer, uh, how do we use that to advance basically the nutrient reduction strategy that the state of Iowa uh, has implemented, I think in 2014, we began that. So that's kind of my emphasis. How do we, uh, we're doing a lot of great things through that strategy, um, but is there a way we can use, like I said, the new hot, hot kid on the, or the new kid on the block to advance that uh, initiative, which is, you know, uh, improves our water, improves our quality of life across the state. And that's kind of my, you know, my thinking behind this. Um, I don't, we gotta be, we don't want to replace, you know, make it look like we're replacing a sad strategy is how do we enhance the strategy? And I think soil health is a way to do that. Um, if we work on soil health, we get water quality. I think if we work on water quality, we end up with better soil health. So, so they're interconnected and, and how can we use that to uh, work together? So that's kind of where I come from, or my mindset, if you want to know how what's happening behind my behind in my head, uh, that's kind of my mindset. Uh, right now at the Capitol, we're uh, doing a trying to come up with some uh, legislation. Um, kind of where uh, two years ago, um, I introduced a bill that uh, basically modernized the soil and water conservation districts. Uh, they're located, I believe, in Chapter 161C in the code, if you would look it up. And basically, it talks about uh, conservation in there, which uh, it, most people think of soil erosion in that area. So uh, what we did two years ago was uh, try to talk about water, improve, include water quality in that conversation, um, trying to update it. We uh, passed the House. Uh, the Senate did not take it up. So uh, I basically am getting a, that bill redrafted as we speak. I want to reintroduce that because I think that might be the vehicle to uh, include soil health in that uh, language for our soil and water conservation districts and um, still working on how to do it, but at least I've created a vehicle to do that because um, the clock is ticking in Des Moines and um, you have got to do things to, uh, in certain time spans. So that's kind of a kind of the direction today I'm headed, so. Good afternoon. My name is Cody Smith and I'm a policy associate at the Center for Rural Affairs. Established in 1973, the Center for Rural Affairs was born out of a desire to build more vibrant rural communities. 
to build rural communities where those who wish to live, work, and raise a family can do so with access to the same opportunities as other people in this state. More than 45 years later, the center continues to advocate for the same values it was founded upon. Genuine opportunity for all to earn a living, raise a family, and prosper in a rural place. Citizen involvement and action to help shape the future. Widespread ownership and control of small businesses, farms, and ranches by those who work them. Stewardship of the natural environment upon which all of us, current and future generations, rely. Here in Iowa, our work is centered around those values. While we continue to advocate for cleaner water, cleaner energy, and long overdue investment in our rural communities, we will continue to advocate for these foundational beliefs. In our fight for cleaner water, reduced flooding impacts, and extended opportunities for outdoor recreation, we continue to believe the farmers, small business owners, homeowners, and local leaders who live in Iowa's watersheds are best equipped to chart their own path forward in achieving these goals. That's why we advocate for watershed management authorities, which are voluntary intergovernmental partnerships between cities, counties, and soil and water conservation districts to improve water quality and reduce flooding. By empowering these local leaders to assess conditions in their watershed, develop a plan of action to address these resource concerns, and work together to achieve process, progress, we're leveraging local control and the love rural Iowans have for the communities they live in to improve quality of life across Iowa. So that's why we advocate. That's why we advocate for state support of watershed management authorities. That's why we're asking the state to adopt our watershed advancements that enhance resources or water pilot program, which calls to a, for a 3-3-3 approach to these efforts. We're asking the state to spend a grand total of $900,000 to grant three three-year grants of $300,000 to eligible watershed management authorities to help cover the expenses of staffing a full-time watershed coordinator. Putting Iowa's communities in the driver's seat. Watershed, watershed coordinators are crucial to reaching the state's clean water and flood mitigation goals. And it's past time the state makes this investment in the people who are doing the work. This work includes communicating with farmers and landowners to get more water quality and flood mitigation projects on the ground developing long-term watershed management plans that provide a clear picture of what success actually looks like, and making sure that all voices are heard as we achieve progress together. Rural Iowans are hungry for opportunity, and we advocate for them because these are our communities too. And when rural Iowans do better, we all do better. Today, at this Environmental Advocacy Day, we encourage you to advocate as well. Advocate for your community. Advocate for your vision for change. Work relentlessly to help make our state one where everyone can enjoy our natural environment for generations to come. As you continue on your advocacy journey, please know that you have a partner in the Center for Rural Affairs. We're proud to be here today to take a stand for rural Iowa, and we hope that you will join us in our fight by joining us on social media and online at CFRA.org. Thank you to the Envi Iowa Environmental Council for hosting this important event today. We are excited to continue our work together to create a more sustainable and resilient future for rural Iowa. Thank you. Thank you to all of our speakers today. We are so pleased that they were able to make the time to speak with us. Session is very busy and they are frequently being called uh, to other places. And so we're so thankful that they could be here uh, with us today. So with that, uh, that concludes our opening remarks for today's session. Um, so we'll go ahead and end this Zoom chat. Our next uh, session will be the virtual advocacy training, which starts at 1230. So you'll be able to join that through your agenda session. Just a reminder that you may need to refresh your Zoom link if you're having trouble connecting. Uh, but we hope that we'll see you back for our virtual advocacy training in just about five minutes. Of course, you're welcome to uh, visit exhibitors or take care of some other business if you have other things to do and come back later in the day. But we hope that you'll take a moment to join us for our virtual advocacy training. And thank you so much for being here. We're delighted to have you with us. We've seen some questions coming across in the event Q&A. Please keep that up. Uh, let us know what you're interested in or what you'd like to learn. Um, visit the exhibitors, ask them questions. View the other attendees uh, that are here today. Perhaps there's someone you want to connect with or send a message to. 
And uh, we look forward to connecting with you more as the afternoon goes on. Thank you.